Watch it guys, welcome to the Mod Studio 2 mini series where we take a look at the different parts of Mod Studio. This is a series of videos where we take a look at Mod Studio 2, all the little things that you can do inside it, and what you need to go along with it for your skinning and your modding. But we're starting off with episode 1, so let's get into the mod files. Watch you guys, welcome back to Game Take. So today we're going to be taking a look at where you get Mod Studio 2 and in a quick install and a quick brief overview. In the next video we'll be having a more in-depth look at the particular parts. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and get Mod Studio 2. So we'll show you quickly how to do that. So we're going to open up a browser and you just literally need to type in Mod Studio 2. And you're going to come down, click down to the download, download Mod Studio 2. Now, this is a different version now. This is the new latest version. So, we'll have a quick look at what's changed in it. It's now got different ATS trailers by the looks of things. There's some added traffic trucks in the new version, a couple of extra mud flaps. Okay, so you can, there's two ways you can get this. You can go to upload.net, which basically is quite a slow way of doing it. And I'm, I'm going to do it through Share Mods. Now, mine will probably block it, but it doesn't matter. You come to this button here, create a download link. Once this is downloaded, we'll just install it. And we're just going to come to our downloads folder. There it is there. I'm going to drag it out onto the desktop, close that down. We're going to right click on it. We're going to extract it into its own folder. Okay, so we don't need the zip anymore. And then we're gonna double click this, open it here, and we're gonna double click on it. And then we're just gonna install it. Then we're just gonna click next, and we're gonna put it into C in Mod Studio 2. It says it's gonna install it in there. Now I've still got my uh, 2020 version installed as well so let's see if it does actually ask us to remove that one or not hasn't so far let's put a nice shortcut on the desktop and exit it's telling me that i need netcore version 5 and it wants to check whether i've got it i think i actually have but press any key to enter okay oh, i'm going to press the space bar then oh there we go you can see what it wants to add in windows runtime okay it's now chucking that into my downloads folder you can read about this if you need to i think the only difference is the last one was um a diff was a different version of net runtime okay so now we're downloaded we'll come back up to our downloads double click on it it'll open this up and then we just install accept the user agreement tells you where it installed it just in case you want it and close and we'll open up mod studio 2 well, this takes a little while to open this there we are so let's put it onto full screen okay guys so just in this episode we're going to have a quick brief overview of what this is this is mod studio 2 where you can use this to help create your mods change your skins all that sort of thing so we're going to go through the different bits. So we're up here in the file section. There's an SES tools section, a home section, and a file section. So in the file section is where you can start your new projects, open a project. Once you obviously do a project, it will come up with save. This is where you go to export your mod. This is where you go to join to, to get the pro features. You become a Patreon. The little what about section, these are patrons, etc. And some options here, auto save paths, etc. Things like that. So that's all in your file section. And we come back, go to the now we're in the home section. Okay, so this is where you would this is your home section. This is where you will add a template once you start a project. They'll all come up in there. So I'll show you that. So you go to start a new project and either an ATS project or an ETS project. So let's just for an example, say we're doing an ETS project and then you can add your templates. You can do it either way around. You can add your manifest first or your template first. I usually do the manifest. So if we open up my manifest, you can see it's the same as the 2020 version. 
No differences here. These are your dependencies, like a Mighty Griffin Pack. If you're adding something that needs the Mighty Griffin Pack uh, mod categories, you know, if you've seen any of the videos, is your truck trailers and your paint job is the one that we use most. Compatible versions, we always leave blank. Icons, you can create your own icons, which we'll be making an episode on. And a little bit of text if you're going to be putting it into um, Workshop or anything like that. And so then you've got your templates. So you can see you've got AI traffic skins, cargo container, existing mod, advanced truck skin, simple engine, standalone trailer, traffic trailer skin, traffic trailer 138. Not sure why that's any different. Traffic trailer, traffic truck skin. There's some hard things to say in this. Trailer mud flaps trailer skin and a simple truck skin which is the one we use most there there's a, it's a template directory which takes you over to where your manifest is you can change things in your manifest you can change like the price of the trailer so it automatically comes up when you're um, filling in your uh, manifest etc and you can change it so that it always comes up with uh, for example game take skins or something you know so that it, rather than keep filling it in each time it will uh, automatically be there there's a console which is just basically command line you can go directly to the files that you've just installed straight from here and the main place that you would go to would be into data or data SES vehicles and then you can see them all down here these are the XML files for all of the trucks and trailers etc but we'll be going into an overview of the files afterwards. There's an error log, which obviously you haven't got an error yet at the moment. Discord, there's now the tutorials is a good section to have a look at. There's a load of good tutorials in here that you can go and look at. Yeah, in the tutorial section, you've got dealing with issues, which is a good little section here. Troubleshooting tips, etc. Well worth a look inside there. And then the final section you've got is SCS tool. So in the next video, we'll be looking at how to extract your files in Mod Studio 2 for your game files. But you can also, there's a color converter. So this will show you, the, if for example, we chose that color there to be our truck color in the game, then that is the hex code that we would need to put in to the game now i don't bother using this because I'm, I'm quite happy with the colors that are in scs but you can see it to get that color you need that code if i've understood it right vehicles you can come into vehicles here now this is where you can add add in the vehicles these are the ones that are in it already your vehicle types ets ats blah, blah, blah. but you can add vehicles in as you can see add a new vehicle Add a mod in, delete vehicles, load a vehicle from mod. We'll be doing that in a, uh, a coming up video. 3D Previewer, which is something we're going to be looking at in a video coming up soon. I'm not sure what the UV exporter is, but we'll open it up. We'll look into it and work out what it does though. And that was just a quick brief overview of Mod Studio 2 and what the different videos coming up will be about. They will all be broken up. The next one's gonna be about how to get your game files extracted from Mod Studio 2. So I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the further episodes of Mod Studio 2. I'm sure we're all gonna learn some really good things with this together. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.